Welcome back, 365 Sports. Grayson Greenhafer, Sikkim365.com. And I know that I said that we're going to talk Baylor football, which we will in a second. But, Grayson, uh, the big story here is that uh, Scott Drew is going nowhere, although it was a very dicey two or three days of him considering it. His family went up there and looked around. There was a lot that went into it, but... Um, this is good news in a lot of regards for Baylor because one, he's going to be a Baylor and two, I think this pretty much, um, solidifies that the only place he's ever going to be is at Baylor. Now that he's turned Kentucky down, which is great going forward for however long he is here before he retires. Correct. And I think it's a really interesting situation because I think if you look around, and you just kind of look at the jobs that could have come available. Um, the Kentucky one seemed like the one that would be the most tempting, I think, for Scott Drew. And a big part of that is, you know, Duke and North Carolina, um, they just don't hire outside of their program. You know, it's kind of become a, a normal thing for them. They're going to hire from within. Um, and, you know, they got coaches in place now. And, of course, Kansas does as well. Um, and then you look around, it's like UConn's got their guy, but Kentucky seems like the program, you know, that goes out and really does an extensive search and tries to hire, you know, the best available coach possible. Um, you know, they kind of ended up with a little bit of a, a dud, in my opinion, as far as what the, the fans think, even though I think Mark Pope's a good coach. Um, it just was very interesting to see, you know, Scott Drew turn that down. And, and I mean, I think it, it became pretty apparent that he was going to stay at Baylor kind of the night before the decision was made. I know Ashley Hodge was completely on top of that the whole way. Um, and it never turned into he's for sure going to Kentucky. Um, but when the family's going up there to look at Kentucky, when you're having conversations with Kentucky, I mean, it's clear that there was interest there in a decision that had to be made. Um, but ultimately, you know, I think the lifestyle, what he's built at Baylor and what his family's built at Baylor at the end of the day is the reason that he stayed. Yeah, Grayson, I, I think that, uh, I don't know, like, I don't know how long it'll, it'll last, but at least for the next year or two, he can go and tell recruits, look, Louisville and Kentucky came after me in the same two weeks and I told both of them no. So, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, he did that. I mean, he's been able to say that a few times because this is not the first time a school's come after him. I know, I think Indiana was looking at him a few years ago. Of course, everyone highlights the Memphis one after John Calipari left as well. Um, so he's had chances to leave Baylor, but at the end of the day, I mean, look at what he's built in Waco, and I think that's a big reason why, you know, he stayed loyal um, to the, you know, not just the fan base, but to the school and, um, just to what he's built there. I, I think that legacy is definitely cemented, and I think it's one of those legacies that um, we're going to continue to see build now. So uh, now that uh, basketball is solved and we don't have to panic about that anymore, football uh, becomes a focus as we are eight days away uh, from the uh, the spring game. And uh, Grayson, what um, what will you have your eye on next week? when it comes to the spring game, because they are so hard to discern about really, especially since they're not going to do any kind of traditional format. Uh, but what will you have your eye on when you're watching that? Well, I mean, there, there's a couple areas, but I think all eyes are going to be on the quarterback position. And, you know, for obvious reasons, I think the first reason being that Dave Veranda has pretty much made the decision after spring ball pretty much every year. And so, you know, going into this spring um, game coming up in a week. I mean, it, it's one of those situations where, you know, Sora Robertson is pushing Daquan Finn far more than I think anyone anticipated. And I, I think when you bring in a guy of that caliber from the transfer portal, um, I think it's probably pretty surprising to the staff as well um, that this has been such a battle. And, and I do think that it's more because of the growth uh, that Sora Robertson has shown and just how comfortable he is in this offense because it's much more similar to what he was running at Mississippi State as opposed to what Baylor ran a year ago. So I think that's going to be fascinating, you know, to see if coming off that spring game, if one of them, um, I, I, you know, I think in general, if the Quan Finn comes out and has an amazing performance, I could see them just going ahead and making that decision right then and there. Um, if it's 
if they think that Sora Robertson has the leg up after the spring game, I just I do not see them making that decision immediately, if that makes sense. Um, I don't think you bring in a transfer like that and then make a decision during spring ball that he's not starting. I, I think you're going to want to see more. So very curious about all of that and very curious to see, you know, how it shakes out and, and see how both play because I think when you get – when you turn the lights on and actually roll the ball out there, I do think there are some things that Jaquan Finn can do um, that are very electric and very different. And that's no slight against Sora Robertson, who's been very consistent this spring. It's just that running ability of Finn is going to be very intriguing to watch. Um, outside of that, you know, I'm very curious to see the offensive line versus the defensive line. Um, last year, I felt like the defensive line really dominated all spring against the, the offensive line. And it really turned out to just be that the offensive line was terrible. And so, you know, you put that together and then you realize, oh, wow, the defensive line wasn't good either by the time the season started. So I'm curious if this year we see a little more flash plays by the defensive line or the offensive line, a little more um, explosiveness, whether that's in the run game or getting after the quarterback. Uh, I'm just curious to see that battle and see which group has the edge because so far – during spring ball, I feel like it's leaning still towards the defensive line. Um, but with Kurt Daniker back, I'm curious if maybe the offensive line uh, takes a step forward. Do you think that the the five spots are fairly solidified, given how much they've used the transfer portal for that? Uh, on the offensive line? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that, I mean, for me, I feel like it, it's fairly obvious. I think you maybe have one position up for grabs, and that one position is probably right tackle. Um, just because I, I think Campbell Barrington is going to be the guy there, and I think he should be the guy there. Um, but Caden Siraki had good moments last year, so I'm curious if, if that battle goes any further. And then, of course, you also have Gavin Byers, who's played a lot of snaps. Um, I think he's more of a rotational guy um, than a starter. Um, I think he's a quality veteran, but I, again, I, I don't think that he's going to take a starting role from Kurt Daniker or uh, Omar Ekbedian. And then I think Colton Price is pretty solidified at center and Alvin Abaselli at left tackle. So it's really right tackle is the one that I think has the most competition currently. Recruiting wise, uh, what's, uh, what's in the offing here in the next couple of weeks? You know, they actually have uh, quite a few visitors coming up. This upcoming weekend, um, you're going to have guys who are committed um, visiting. And so I think that's kind of where, you know, kind of most of the intrigue is coming from. A lot of guys who are going to be taking official visits will be visiting over the next couple weeks, including for the spring game. Um, so, yeah, I think it's just about visits, getting guys on campus. Um, I will mention, I, I think there's a little bit of momentum right now um, for a really good prospect in South Oak Cliff linebacker Jaden Shelton. Um, there's some momentum there on Baylor's side. And he's a guy who would be a heck of addition to this class. He's a guy who's had a lot of interest in Baylor for a while now. He visited last weekend um, for the scrimmage and just is a guy who is uh, an absolute playmaker and, and would be a really nice gift for the Baylor staff. I mean, you look at his offer list, Michigan, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Texas, Texas a and So a lot of really good offers and a guy that I think Baylor is currently trending for and one that would be a huge pickup at a position of need at that linebacker spot. Grayson Grunhafer, Sikkim365.com. Grayson, enjoy the weekend now that we're not going to have to think about a basketball search. <laughs> Thanks so much, Paul. I appreciate it, man. Have a great weekend. Grayson Grunhafer, Sikkim365.com. In a couple of weeks, I'm just going to have Grayson.